that certain genre of people or music. Screw Battle Royales, dude. <laughs> I hate I hate video games. Honestly. I hate video games. Arr. I hate music. <laughs> I'm only into drawing for the money. Because, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's a yeah, common I trope. Sure if, and I, I pay my co-artists with exposure. Yeah, well, I mean, that's obviously the most common currency. It's what everyone uses. Dude, like, all that matters is how many followers see it. Okay. Yeah, um, let me ping Discord. Raftcast episode recording with Aza! I'm Oops. excited. I almost pasted your friend code <laughs> so my stream. Oh, that would have been that would have been fun. <laughs> Everyone go add Aza right now! <laughs> go add Aza. I need friends. Oh wait, am I in, I don't remember if I'm in Okay, we're gonna take a risk, Gaza. I went live with everyone mode instead of uh, sub only mode today, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, good luck, moderators. I kind of forgot you. that that was a feature Twitch put in until yesterday, and it was really um, convenient. I, yeah, I was gonna raid you, and then I saw like a star thing next to your name, and I was like, what does that even mean? Yeah, so it just meant people couldn't watch more than five minutes unless they were, or two minutes, I think, unless they were subbed. Yeah, and... I, I went in later, and I was like, a, there was like a preview thing, and I was like, what? Yeah, well, it was really nice because the day prior I had just had sub only mode on chat and trolls were like subbing to brag about refunding and just trolling basically. So they, uh, like we had no issues yesterday. Yesterday was such a relaxing stream. Aww. It did suck that like it kind of cucked everybody out of viewing, but you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, like the subs are the, like make up a decent part of the core viewership. So, yeah. I mean, the funny thing is, like, when I stream Rust, I usually only get about 100 people anyways, and I think the difference was, like, 90 versus 100, so it wasn't that bad. But okay, let's get this. Let me get the game loaded. Let me get you in. I'll start recording. Um, but for everyone who's here, hello. We'll go over what we're doing here in a moment. But I'm here with Aza. The, uh, Hi. The British guy with a nice dog, as Ash once put it. Oh, that was me summed up perfectly. <laughs> I always thought that was so funny and cute. She's like, can we invite that one guy? Uh, um, he's British and has a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a really narrows it down, Ash. All right. Um, are you able to join off here? Or do I need to invite you? Uh, I think I can join. It says you're playing VTube Studio for some reason, though. <sighs> yeah, sorry. I, it's if I open the programs in a wrong order. Let me, uh, uh, well, hang on. Before I restart VTube Studio, let me see if I can uh, just invite you off Steam or something. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh. Uh, I, no, I can connect through the menu. We're, we're good. Ah, hey. <clears throat> I want to take a look at what everyone else has built. I did watch. I watched Kara's. Yeah, well, uh, it's uh, take all the inspiration that you want. I'm just actually moving my avatar around. I realize I'm blocking my health on this side. Okay, so hi everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Raftcast, which I didn't think would become a series, but everyone's been really liking it and asking for more, so why not? I've got Oz the World on as a guest this time, and we'll go over how this works for him as a benefit, but also for anyone who's watching brand new. Hey, what's up, cutie? Hey. Just a little dance. Wait, what's the, um, she was, is it comma? Yeah, third person. There we go. <laughs> Enough of that. Uh, welcome to the raft, Aza. So this is a raft in survival mode. I've just been going around collecting a bunch of resources for you and other guests to come on and basically build your your dream house here on the raft. If you want to come join me on the second level, um, Ooh, you got in at a good nice time. Idea. Before we yeah. on, before stop halt before we do the house tours, uh, the patch has actually added some really fun cosmetic stuff. But I'm also not sure if you have access to it or not because I had to like open boxes in game for it. So if you okay. don't, I can make you some lights and some ledges and some other things as you build. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Yeah, this was the first one. This was Mew. This is Mew's hut. This is Mew's hut. Oh, this is very cute. Yeah. This is so sweet. I've been grinding paint too. Uh, I would prefer if you... What What's your favorite color? 
Um, probably green. Green. Okay. I'll see what we can do about making green. Uh, this is Kara's house that definitely didn't get wrecked. Uh, fun story about this one. There used wrecked. to be there used to be art on this wall behind you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I accidentally broke the wall and the art with it. <laughs> so now. Oh no. But the rest of it's fine. I recovered it. I saved it. I repainted it and everything. She made the, like her her classic witch tower thing. You know she does in Minecraft and stuff. Yeah, this is uh, this is Kara vibes. This is kind of evil but but cozy and warm. Evil but cozy and warm. I like that. Yeah. Well, what's, um, what's what's gonna do that? Oh, uh, um, come on. <laughs> so you know shovel, right? Yeah, I know Shovel. So a lot of Shovel's fans used to watch my stream and we'd hang out and uh, I'd name animals after them. And if they misbehaved in chat, then I brought them over here to the uh, timeout quarter. <laughs> so I think presently we have Corinne and uh, yeah, Corinne and I can't even see the name tags of the other animals. But yeah, they're in timeout. <laughs> they're in timeout. Oh, you won't have a zipline tool. You'll have to swim back over. I forgot. Uh, that's fine. I'm a pedestrian. I'm a, I'm a guest. Guests don't get to zipline. <laughs> Guests don't get to zipline. Well, let me show you where the essentials are because you'll you'll get probably hungry and thirsty while we're playing. Um, I should have an extra bottle for you upstairs, but if I don't, I can just give you mine. So here's where the main water refill is. Fresh water. Um, oh, okay. Lots of food around here. I don't know if you played the game enough to know, but in this top left chest is the soup. If you eat any of this soup, it like increases it gives you like this little tiny green sliver that makes the hunger tick slightly slower. So if oh, you so it, soup. Should I steal soup? Then? Oh, oh, you steal soup or just lots of regular food, whatever. It's just, you know, so you don't constantly get stuck needing to run down here. Um, If you come back upstairs, I'll show you where the tools and stuff are. So while we're doing this, I'm going to be asking you some questions kind of casually. I think of it more of like a podcast, less of an interview. And uh, right, we'll just okay. chat while you build and I'll be running around doing maintenance on the ship and getting you more supplies while we do it. But then here's the I'm main excited. tool area. So this is where we've got wood and planks and plastic and scrap <gasps> and make all the nails you want so that you can just build without too much worry. Oh my goodness. Okay, sure. This There's is a lot of stuff. This is pretty much like, is it 12 a.m. and I can't sleep? Let's just play half an hour raft to get materials. <laughs> uh, I think this should be good, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, in the snacks and, chest, um, there's a water bottle for you. There it is. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't even get far enough in the game to have a water bottle. I'm still I'm still on a plastic cup level. So I've got two plots set out. One's for you, one's for Lexi. You're here first, mm -hmm. so you get to pick which one you want. Ooh, ooh. Which one would? I'm not thinking which one I want. I'm thinking which one Lexi would want, and I'm gonna pick that one. You want to steal hers, yeah? Hmm. Yeah. Well, this I one's... think I think Lexi I think Lexi likes to be different, and she would want to be like here. It's a little more separate, you know. Yeah, well, uh, on the other hand, she might want to be closer to Kara, though, you know? Hmm. Oh. Oh, also, oh, we I didn't show you this one. Check out Z's I hut. Build, whatever I build isn't going to look as good next to Kara. Dude, so you see those little lights? Those are brand new. We hung those up. They look really cute. Oh, wow. They are really cute. Okay, yeah. I definitely want some of those if we can make some. Yeah, I, absolutely. He made, like, a restaurant is, I think, what his goal was. I'm um I'm thinking I'm thinking okay we have we have some places to stay we have an evil magic witch's tower I want to build something zen I want to build something quite like hey man whatever yeah, you want feng shui oh let me give you this axe. these both the same size these yeah plots? so everyone okay. just everyone gets kind of like a four by four area um mm -hmm. yeah, but here take this axe because you'll need it to chop up the ropes and stuff as you go and whatnot. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I'll, sure. I'll take this one. I'll take this one. I'll just. I'll keep building in a line. Keep things ticking along. Here's a hammer as well. Help you build with. Thank you. And. Okay. I'm gonna grab yeah. some materials. <clears throat> Dope. And I'm gonna go try and get some flowers so that we can make more paint. Because. Oh yeah, paint. Uh, you yeah. won't need it until you're totally done. But the paint's over okay. here in this chest. Um, Which chest? Sorry. When you come out, you'll see me jumping. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I'll build it all first and then we can we can paint it up. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks, Aza. You are, again, as a friend once called, the British guy with a nice dog. That's tell us me. about tell us about your dog, man. How how dog. old? How cute? 
Oh, he's he's very very cute. He's very, he's not very old. So um, he was a, he was a lockdown puppy. Um, I've always worked at like animal sanctuaries. I worked at an animal sanctuary for like three years whilst I was at university. And my favorite dogs were like the wolfhounds, the the well, the you know the half wolf dogs, the the German shepherds and everything. And so my mum told me that we were getting a puppy, and I was very 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 excited. Um, I had visions of you know maybe like a Tamascan or a Malamute, something something huge and wolfy. And um, we got a little terrier and he's adorable and he's rather aptly named bilbo because he's <laughs> just he's just so tiny that's cute that's very cute i think i think it's seven months he's about as big as he's as he's gonna get but yeah he was a big he was kind of like um i think when i first met ash that's where this like joke has come from when i first met ash we had literally just got him and he was howling he was like howling the house down um and i was playing with like ash and um the crew <laughs> and they could just hear these little pathetic yells going off in the background. So I became yep, the yep. British guy with the dog. No, no, you know, of, of all the, the stereotypes you could have been regarding being a British guy, the one with the dogs are pretty pretty solid. Pretty solid one, I think. I guess, yeah, it's it's um I wasn't upset when I <laughs> when you told me. I thought it was funny. Ash is also just a very funny person. And I like that she's very blunt, so she's Try to describe who to invite to this Among Us lobby. I was so confused initially because I'm like, I know like five British people, but I have no idea who has a dog. <laughs> like, that's cute. That's nice. I've uh, I've personally only had a cat in my life, and sadly she passed away several years ago at this point. Aww. But uh, man, I love. There's something about like the bond of being a like a pet owner. It's really, it's really special. I think um, streaming suits owning pets. I think that's quite why so many streamers own pets. Because unlike like a conventional nine to five, right? You have time to kind of you're around all the time, so you're not leaving them by themselves. Yeah, like if so, they need out or something, you're there. Yeah, you know, at the sanctuary, we would we would um, we would only give like a dog to someone if they could be around every six hours. And if you think a typical nine to five is what like seven and a half hours a day so like streaming just kind of counts that you know i know uh blizzard's under some particular heat right now so this might not be the best time to bring them up but they're also like one of the biggest corporate entities i've ever been to and uh w one thing i love is on their campus they actually just had this whole area for pets just like straight up and i thought that was awesome like a doggy daycare yeah and i think that from what i'm hearing this is becoming a little bit more common with a lot of these more tech companies like as they try to like have their employees more happy with working for them they give them more benefits and some of those benefits are pet related and i don't know for me when i think about the corporate world that's not what i think of but i thought that was kind of cool to see that's really sweet but okay where, where am i getting nails uh, oh you have to craft nails from scrap there might be some uh, in some of the chests left over from previous builds but uh yeah you use the scrap in the tool area and you just craft some nails out of it you will need a significant amount of nails, by the way. So don't worry about making a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, scrap, 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 scrap. But okay, so you got a cute pupper. Tell us mm. about you, Aza, for those who are uninitiated with your kindness. Uninitiated. Aww. Who is Aza? Who is Aza? Well, Aza is very new to streaming. Um, I only started in February of this year which is why a lot of people might not be very familiar with me. Um, I feel like to a lot of people, obviously you included, like I kind of came out of nowhere. Like everyone who has met each other through Among Us has sort of, if they've not met, they've heard their names before, right? Well, um, I, I don't know about I that. Moved... To be honest, I'm like yeah. take someone super popular and established like Freya, right? Mm -hmm. I knew about as much about Freya as I knew about you when we first met. So I don't know like, about I don't know if that's necessarily had you, had the you case. Have you heard her name before? Not a single time. Or... Not a once. Oh, okay. Maybe that's a British thing. I guess she's very well known in the UK scene. Yeah, pro probably, but I'm just saying, I think a good chunk of people who got into playing Among Us with each other had no idea who some of the other people were at first. But what was really nice too was like we all became friends pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I'd basically I'd started streaming because my um, a bunch of my friends were streamers and I had streamed while I was like in Japan but on a different website called um, it was Nico 
well, it's called Nico Nico or Nico Video. Um, it's a very different experience to Twitch. And um, it sounds yeah, about it ten was, times more adorable. It was. <laughs> There's, there's just, there's, there's a lot more. It's, it kind of, the best way to describe it is like, 2000 and like 10 YouTube. Like you could just kind of, do whatever you wanted, and there was an audience for it. Um, you didn't have to play some crazy meta. You could just kind of post, a video of a panda sneezing and get, 20 million views. Oh my god, um, it's, it's so funny you mentioned. I kind of, I was thinking about that the other day, like how, how much things have changed in terms of like content right everyone's trying to game the algorithm or game whatever what pranks were popular everyone was doing pranks and dumb stuff like that i kind of miss when you could you just had people posting these like three minute videos of the it's just funny stuff but they can't do that anymore because they're too worried about like the algorithm not picking them up and stuff yeah it's uh i i it's it's the same with streaming right like i would love to be a variety streamer but i don't think viably there's that's a thing. Um, I know Courage the other day was talking about like, hey, yeah, he's just started streaming whatever he wanted, and he's seen a big viewership dip. But as as a as a small streamer, that viewership dip is 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 like a lot more noticeable. You can't you can't make an income necessarily or grow your stream just Are streaming you, everything. You know, thinking on that, it's really interesting because um, you know, I I don't know how much you know about my past, but I used to have a significantly larger viewership than I carry nowadays, and I think the 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 viewership dip i'm not going to try and take anything away from anybody everyone has their own experiences but for me it was i think more noticeable losing 500 viewers than losing five but the scale like essentially is the same right like you're still losing people that is a percentage of your audience but i could kind of see why courage would be upset about stuff like that but at the same time man like yeah since i've had to restart since because like i think i restarted maybe three months before meeting you um it, it definitely hurts when you see your viewership not at say like 200 but at like 150 you're like i thought i was doing pretty good this month but i guess not <laughs> yeah it's it's so it's a strange one among us has, has hurt quite a lot as well i feel like um everyone kind of felt it was it was going i'm sorry i can't find any scrap anywhere oh wait we should have plenty in here do we not yeah the um the wood chest sorry aptly oh the wood chest aptly and incorrectly named yes scrap is hard to get so i just piled it in with the wood <laughs> thank you yeah among well yeah among us was interesting because it created a lot of opportunities and i think some people saw it as networking and some people saw it as making friends and some people saw it as like a viewership ride i know i was talking to uh you know yeti right yeah i love yeti so i love yeti too but he was he was talking a little bit how um you know among us viewership firm was so great at the start and it started falling off and it really hurt because it feels like you've done something wrong <laughs> you know you've lost this boost that you had over the month or two from playing among us you have to remind yourself it was yeah it was you know it was a lot of lurkers and you've you've maintained your core people and you, all you've lost is is people that weren't contributing necessarily to to your kind of community they were just there to, to watch among us i got really lucky personally where uh for me, like I said, it was kind of a restart phase. I left StarCraft 2 and esports and was getting into doing variety stuff. And playing Among Us was awesome because I didn't go into it with the goal of having viewers. I knew restarting over, you know, going from a 2000 concurrent average to a 100 concurrent average, like it was going to be bad no matter what. So my focus was just on making friends. So I feel like for me, Among Us was this great period. I, I know other people are lamenting because of the viewers and that whatnot. But for me, I was just like, Nah, my, I wanted to meet new people and make new friends because I've been stuck in the same scene for years and I got to do exactly that. So I've got nothing but like positive opinions on how Among Us yeah. went. Yeah, yeah, me too. I I um, I think I started Twitch at one of the best times to start Twitch because the meta became... I started Twitch to play with my friends and to make new friends. And the meta of Twitch had kind of shifted to... Among Us shifted it to group games and playing a lot more things like that and all of a sudden yeah. these servers were coming up like it used to be if you wanted to organize a group game right you'd get a discord group together um and message people individually and these servers started popping up that was like hey you know here's a queue of people um <laughs> just sign up here like yeah, it's like, among you, us you purple among us green <laughs> yeah are you like anti-social and too scared to reach out to people just just click this button and you can play and i'm like oh my gosh yeah it's it was really funny too because like you go to these servers and for me, a little shocking was like people I'm friends with now, like Jordan and 
and others these big streamers were there and it was like i would never know how to reach out to them they've got millions of subscribers but they were just there suddenly you're just like oh i suddenly have access to these massive content creators who you know it's not like you want to use and abuse them but you just you had no way of contacting them prior <laughs> Yeah, they just, they weren't in your, in your world, and now you're just sat there with, like, yeah, in a call with them. Um, and so I do, I do feel like I started Twitch at a very, um, opportune time, just to, just to meet new people. Um, um, yeah, and we met, obviously we met in Among Us, and it's, it's a, it's a strange way to, to, to meet someone as well. It's kind of like, a game where you're not supposed to trust them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're interacting, um, sort of you know once every every couple of minutes in a in a meeting um ah, but I, you know I, I feel like and i don't know if you agree with this i'm sorry to interrupt but i feel like that's almost a better way to get to know people because it's no mm -hmm. it's no like oh you're not feeling the, the the awkward silence with menial conversation you're not like you, you get to show kind of your mental fortitude as well because you're presenting whether or not you can pull off lying and shit like that like I feel those little interactions gave me a much better insight to some people than any kind of sitting at them with Twi like a TwitchCon would have done. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> I think my, my favorite ones of, of meeting people though was, was Proximity. Um, Proximity was I, so like, fun! It was so fun and it kind of just, I don't know what happened to it. I'm not sure if everyone just all agreed at the same time to stop playing no, Chat, or whether the mod just wasn't supported but i can tell you exactly what happened because there's still people who use proc chat like a lot of the time like mm -hmm. uh as their main among us like feature and it's, it's as simple as just, like it didn't always work for everybody and some people their priority was to do proximity chat and some people their priority was to play with their friends and i think what ended up happening was the people who wanted to play with their friends ditched prox chat and the people who wanted to do prox chat ditched friends you know I know that yeah, sounds really gotcha. harsh, but that's my point of view of what happened. Um, yeah, so that was how I made a lot of a lot of very close friends. But what I also found was you would jump into a lobby of 10 people and every single time there would be that one person I'd never met before that there was just an immediate connection with. Like there was an immediate rapport. You guys were just like on the same wavelength. Dude, pastaroni um, ravioli. Yeah. <laughs> That girl is so funny. I immediately just like, oh, she's down for shenanigans as soon as I met her. I was on board. And I think what's cool too is like you you not only you make some instant connections, but you kind of develop some. Like like for me, when I first met Brood, he was just like another guy in like Hafu's lobby or something. Like I didn't really know much of him. Didn't care to know much of him because he was just like another random person. Now Brood's like one of my favorite people. Like, like straight up, and I don't care if he hears this and it's embarrassing later, like. If someone tells me Brood's in a lobby, I'm in. Like, you don't even have to explain who else is there or what mode yeah. it is. Like, there are just some people I'm like, yeah, I'm in. I'm on board. Yeah, I agree. Brood, Brood is good people. Um, and, yeah, so, again, like, I came in, I came in with the Among Us meta. Viewership was, was pretty crazy immediately. Like, everyone was like, oh, you know, I streamed for three years to five viewers. And I was like, what? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> oh but, yeah, that's always a weird stat to hear from people. Yeah, I've I've never I've never quite like I don't want to sound like, you know, belittling to 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 people, but um, I just I was just pleasantly surprised. I went in it with with very low expectations and numbers wise, like honestly, within probably three months, I'd I'd hit partner. Um, well, you know why that is, it, right? You've got Chinese. an accent, and accents are fucking yeah. cheating. As someone who doesn't feel like he has hey. one because he comes with a North American dialect, you could say the dumbest thing, and it will sound so fancy and good. It's like, so, okay, oh, wait, wait, you know, mm -hmm. you know how like in Japanese they say anything, it sounds badass as hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With British yeah. people, it's like you say anything, it sounds kind of refined and like intellectual, no right. matter what it is. Right. So when I met Vince, he was talking about how it was unfair because he just immediately trusted everything I said because it sounded so educated. <laughs> and he just assumed True, that it was though. correct. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it, it was an interesting one for me because I got into these um, Among Us Discord servers through um, knowing some of the big British people connections. People like, you know, you've mentioned Freya, some of like the sidemen. Um, 
and they all stream kind of 11 to 5 p.m. my uh, 5 p.m. my time but that's that's when I'm at work like working my day job mm -hmm. so I came into these NA lobbies as as the British guy with a dog you know pretty much the only British guy so uh, <laughs> I think that, yeah I think that was a, that was definitely advantageous actually on that note um speaking of having a full-time job I know I've been excited to talk to you about this and we've on purposely been putting it off for personal combo to mm -hmm. save it for the raft cast so it's about time we discuss Aza what do you do what do I do okay so um before university i like art, art was my passion and i really wanted to like pursue a career in it but i knew that i didn't necessarily want to go to um art school like i don't know if you've ever watched any um youtube videos from like story time animators or anything like that but they always painted art school as like this terrible place where they force you to to draw and get better at art and and learn real art and i just wanted to draw like manga and the stuff i grew up reading you know so um i decided to go um for a less traditional route and a more japanese route which is taking an apprenticeship under um under an artist which was when i moved out to uh tokyo for about 10 months this is so um, crazy I, I love this story already i worked under a, a mangaka which is um it's essentially like just having being an art assistant and there were three of us working under this this one guy and he was he was amazing like um and it was very much like immediately like jumping in at the deep end it's like hey i'm not gonna teach you here's a bunch of sketches i need you to like meet in these <laughs> do up this. and make these look good you've got like eight hours do this right there's there's no like there's no wiggle room you finish in that time frame or like you, you know you don't do that job it's um it's very difficult and that's probably why I didn't manage very long in it. Um, but that kind of led me to, um, like I came back and, and I went to university and um, did the more, the more traditional route. But I'd always wanted to kind of work in like, you know, like, like YouTube or, um, or Twitch or something along those lines. And um, so I ran a YouTube channel the whole time I was there and somehow a, a writing degree, my art experience, and YouTube video experience kind of culminated in me managing to get myself hired as a, um, it's called a creative producer. Um, it's essentially along the lines of like, I, I get to write and storyboard um, animations for like video games, um, video game trailers specifically, um, and like little cinematics for games and stuff. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing job. I really, really love it. Yeah, well, I actually, um, I want to ask you more about this, but I want to touch back on something you just said. Also, quick apologies to the YouTube video. I thought I turned off alerts for this. I didn't. My bad. Uh, and if I was uh, subbing or anything today, I'll get you guys shouted out and properly thanked once we're done with uh, this show. But a teacher. Oh, my goodness, dude. Okay. So from someone who had terrible teachers in high school and probably didn't experience his first good mentoring experience till like I was 25. The difference a good teacher can make is so insane and it's it's like i'm not here to start making the argument like teachers in america aren't paid enough and whatever because i mean that's a worldwide thing but yeah the like someone who teaches you something well with passion can leave such an impact on you versus someone who teaches you poorly and makes you not interested in the subject at all and i'm really glad you had like a good teacher for art stuff because i feel like especially with art you need to like kind of be inspired almost by the person who teaches you how to draw or do manga or whatever because that's a medium that i think is so easily criticized i am um, i think i think part of it is and i don't i just i don't understand this is like a dig at teachers because a lot of them are incredibly talented but there's always been that joke right that those who um can't do teach and i felt that at university when i had these writing professors and and I was like, have you actually published anything? You're, you're teaching me how to, to write novellas. <laughs> you're what, what teaching kind of me? works? Yeah, like what works do you have like to kind of qualify you besides you, you taking this course and deciding that you could teach this course, you know? Whereas working under an artist that you can just, you can just straight up see, you'll sit behind him. Um, and in the space of five minutes, he could draw something that would take me three hours and would look half as good, not even half as good, you know? So, um, <laughs> you know? It's through Gardic phone that you can really see this too, right? Like 
the people who could draw can draw so quick in that really tiny little bubble that everyone stresses out about and those who can't are just like come up with a stick man after five minutes and i'm definitely feeling like a lot of the time people are in the latter category <laughs> gothic phone um has been great at teaching people to get better at arts very quickly though so there's been for instance like um i play in a regular lobby every week with a, a group of similar people and the one that surprised me the most because i i guessed that kyra would be an amazing artist you know she's great at cosplay she's good at everything artsy. i hate it yeah she's and funny like, she's you know, pretty course... shout out to kyra corbis mm -hmm. real quick <laughs> i was like of course kyra's good at up but then i st like z like every week i would play with z and every week z's art would just be so much better like to, it passed the point where it's like um a stick man you know and I, i'm just like no dude that's like that's an actual drawing right there like you have just blown me away an <laughs> actual drawing an actual drawing. that sounds so mean almost <laughs> <laughs> yeah so manga stuff I, I guess do you have um mm -hmm. you've got a comic or something coming out or like a whole manga right. itself coming out yeah so between between my full-time job streaming every night <laughs> somehow in like the few hours in between, I managed to work on um, my manga, which uh, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of the website uh, Webtoon. Yes, I actually read um, quite a few things on Webtoon. Okay, I love I also... it. It's, it's essentially, for the people not in the know, it's kind of like the YouTube of comics. Like yeah. anyone can post anything um, and it's it's really great. It's really great. I gotta say like on, a, on this note of Webtoon, just before we dive back to you, the Korean comics are so beautiful. Like how who gave them the right to make people look so good all the time? Do you wanna do you wanna know uh have you seen True Beauty, like the comic? Uh no, I was like, wait, this is a really profound question. Like, have I experienced true beauty? No. Okay, no. have you experienced true beauty? <laughs> so the creator of that um is like the most beautiful k-pop star looking korean woman i've ever seen in my entire life and oh, she's geez. also the creator of this insanely just professional looking looking webtoon. um and it, I'm just, i don't know how people do it i don't know how they do it like they can create sort of 40 panels of insane artwork every single week and you look at the credits and that like they're the only person credited you know and i'm just like what what is going on i just unlocked a new item by the way while you're talking called motivational quote <gasps> can we put we can put one on the wall i see this I'm sounds so perfect for your, your zen thing yeah okay motivational quote tease uh teasing perfectly it takes three nails and six wood we can do that when you're done what did it just give us a randomly generated that's what I'm thinking. Art. It probably just gives us some like weird RNG like That'd be profound amazing. quote. Okay, I'm gonna need a bolt. I need a new axe. Yeah. So uh, upstairs, there's like three boxes in, by the steering wheel area. Mm -hmm. There's metal ingots and bolts there. If there's no bolts, you can make them out of one metal ingot. Okay. Thank you. So I'm doing cooking duty. Gotta cook them up in my galley. But yes, yeah, so your manga. Um, I don't know. Do you have anything you want to share or show or anything? Um, like I'm happy to talk about it. So, uh, as part of my um, last subathon, I it was the first time I'd shown any of it, um, and I went through the first, uh, the whole first episode, just the artwork. Like I haven't actually added all the the speech bubbles and everything like that yet. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm happy to talk about it. It's it's um, my favorite webtoon personally is one called Lore Olympus, which is um, quite obviously rooted in like Greek mythology and I find that like a lot of Western media like Greek mythology is just so popular right now like everyone knows who Zeus and um uh like Apollo and Artemis and everyone like that is you know you um <laughs> I've actually thought about this a little bit it's so weird because it was the Roman Empire that pretty much almost conquered the world but it's not the Roman version of this mythology we know about through history and teaching. It's the Greek version, which I've always thought was kind of funny. I think it's just because it's cooler. It's like the same reason that we know about um, Norse mythology, right? <laughs> it's, it's like the same like... but different, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just cool. It's just, um, I, th I don't know. I feel like the Romans just, they had to make it their own, you know, and it was kind of a watered down version. <laughs> it wasn't Zeus, it was Jupiter, damn it. <laughs> and he's also a planet. 
<laughs> Dude, actually, on this topic real quick, I always thought it was funny. Like, as a kid, I never really thought about it much. But as an adult, I'm like, Zeus was kind of like... Really, uh, not such a good guy. Uh, what oh, do you think about they're really messed up. But I like, I like the idea of like, you know, fallible gods like that, like not being perfect. Um, yeah. I, there was um. And, oh, what was this? Yeah. There was an anime called Charlotte or something, mm -hmm. and it was about like it's in this genre of like you know everyone's got the superpower, but all their superpowers are kind of incomplete or imperfect. So like, there's a girl who can go invisible, but it's only like one person at a time. Everyone else can still see her. And stuff like that. Right. So I, I, I the same with gods. Like I love, I love when the, it's not perfect because I think I think we all grew up with like the previous generation having people like Superman and these other iconic people that were perfect and the pinnacle of what you should be as a human. And now we kind of appreciate these more realistic versions because we realize not everything's so perfect, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And um. And so, yeah, I've just seen, you know, even just now with Marvel popularizing Norse mythology, Greek mythology is everywhere, Percy Jackson and, and Laura Olympus and everything. But like, um, <laughs> I know you say, and the lightning thief. I'm like, yeah, and the light, yeah, Percy Jackson is the lightning thief. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Shinto, I find, isn't something that's explored as much. But like, if you look into the history of it, it's, it's crazy. Um, it was up until the First World War in Japan, like 90% of people like that was their religion they identified as and it's just it's so crazy and there's so many cool monsters and art potential and so it's um it's basically just like a comic uh like a fusion of modern day tokyo but filled with like classical shinto creatures that like people won't even have like seen or thought could exist um that sounds awesome all, though. All living in modern day tokyo that sounds really cool and i'm like i don't i don't want to sound like i'm pandering or like that sounds awesome though yeah so it's um it's essentially it's that kind of um fused like a reverse isekai so we have like an ancient princess from like feud the feudal era of japan um chasing like a villain through through a portal uh and they both come out in like in the modern day and she has all these like lofty aspirations of like battling gods and taking down this this villain but she ends up working at, um basically like uh the non-copyrighted version of mcdonald's um, <laughs> dude i always love when mangas and like anime they take like really popular things and they change it so it's just like instead of mcdonald's it's whack donald's and stuff it's, like, wha whack donald's. it's basically yes. the same logo and the same so, design so and in my in my universe i decided instead of turning the emma upside down i've gone for like um instead of burger king it's burger barn um and it's the, it's the same colors on the logo and everything like that i've been working with a genetics artist yeah because I, I really what you have I, is I really for legal caps. reasons not mcdonald's <laughs> dude i want to get caps with this like fake burger king logo. <laughs> i think it'd be so cool hell yeah if it looks good enough i was uh this whole thing's actually making me think of a show i really enjoy have you have you ever seen or heard of american gods oh i have yeah yeah on amazon yeah uh on amazon by the way twitch.tv on of, amazon uh, twitch.tv for... <laughs> no but that was the kind of an interesting one too where they took like you know greek gods and other mythology and it's just like kind of normally in society mm -hmm. and all that and i thought that was kind of a cool concept and you're just giving me those vibes and i like that a lot so i feel like I'm probably gonna read your manga cover to cover, dude. <laughs> oh, dude, I am. I am so excited. It's taken. It's taken so much time. I work on it two hours every day between finishing my job and streaming. I have three hours, so I I work on this for two hours. I eat. I walk the dog, um, and then I hop on stream for sort of three to four hours. But it's it's really starting to to take shape. I'm on. I've finished five complete episodes now. So I want to get to ten, and then we'll probably start posting um, sometime in the winter. I'm so envious that you can focus on all this stuff. Actually, I, you know, for with ADD, I'm like two seconds in. I want to do the next thing already. And the idea of like maintaining a full time job streaming, whether casually or just playing with friends. And then on top of that, taking care of your animal plus living plus working on this project. Like, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, Oz, I'm jealous that you could pull this off, man. That's like the modern day it's... Renaissance man. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of fine. Um, I'm, I'm really really stretching myself and but it's one of those um situations where like i think a lot of streamers 
come a lot well a lot of streamers especially in lockdown have come to streaming you know during lockdown because they've like they're out of work or whatever whereas i have theoretically on paper what is my dream job um and it's very hard to kind of Ooh. push myself to that point where it's like hey you know like streaming's streaming's at a point now where um i could quit my job um, which <laughs> is is pretty crazy i'm just thinking like uh is it really your dream job if you have to preface it with theoretically <laughs> like, or well, theoretically <laughs> it's one of those it's one of those things right where like i can no matter how cool the project i'm working on is like is it's not my project it's someone else's vision um true and i i've worked with some really really cool people but like i've already worked with my favorite people so i'm a huge doctor who nerd right and in my first week sorry doctor who um yeah are you a fan? <laughs> no, I was making a bad joke. Go oh ahead. no! Oh, you didn't. You didn't <laughs> make that joke, dude. I thought you got excited. I didn't realize you were doing that to me. I actually am excited because I am actually a Doctor Who fan, but I only okay. started watching with um, shoot, I don't remember the the order of the Doctor numbers, but Eccleston or mm -hmm. whatever, and then Eccleston. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's so. So this will mean a lot to you then. Um, in my first week, like being the biggest Doctor Who nerd, we had uh. Basically, I was doing some stuff for Games Workshop, um, like Warhammer, and they decided, like, hey, we're doing sci-fi stuff, so we should just steal the old Doctor Who cast, right, to make this popular. And they had Catherine Tate, Billy Piper, and David Tennant in the oh space my God. of a week. I had such a big crush um, on Billy Piper, dude. I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> Catherine Tate, by the way, too, like, I didn't necessarily love her character in Doctor Who, but she, I didn't mm -hmm. realize she was a comedian. She's so funny. I've seen she some of her stuff so outside funny. of it. She is so, so, so funny. And so, like, you know, I'm kind of like, well, I've I've worked with... If you if you asked me, like, any actor on this planet, who would you want to work with, it, it would have always been David Tennant. Um, Dude, he is so, so versatile. I, I didn't realize yeah. he's been in, like, DuckTales and all these other shows. Like, he plays Scrooge McDuck. I'm like, wait a minute, that's that's Doctor Who! He's uh he's won so many acts because he, he you know he can he can go from villain to heartthrob to Scrooge McDuck you know like yeah he was in um, uh was it Jessica Jones too as a bad guy right yeah yeah he we me and my friends uh worked out because he's 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 not really on camera is he he's always kind of behind the scenes and then there's that scene where he licks her face oh god that was so we were, creepy it was so good so how we, well he did it yeah it was so we looked up we were like how much did he get paid okay for for this this whole to, to lick someone's series <laughs> yeah and then we divided that by the amount of screen time he had and then we timed how long he licked her face and he got paid thirty five thousand dollars to lick her face damn not bad not bad not man. bad <laughs> actually uh so while we're on the topic of doctor who because i do want to go mm -hmm. back to you but on the topic of doctor who i really i think some of my favorite episodes uh, and I guess, I don't know, do I need a spoiler alert? I feel like Doctor Who's so old at this point, but... Hey, so, yeah, the, dude, like any old episodes, right? The um, the episode with the library will always stick out to me. <gasps> like, the, the stupid, who turned out the lights? Like, oh man, it's yeah, like hey, shivers. who turned out the lights? Yeah. Hey, it's so simple, and it is one of the scariest... They are good at yeah, scary. Yeah, I was going like, to say that and the Weeping Angels, right? Like The Weeping Angels are the best monster like movie tv monster ever thought of right it's they're incredible so okay the way i watched this though you might hate me for because i saw um I, the very first doctor who episode i saw was actually the one where matt smith came into play i had heard of doctor who i had known david Tennant was like the doctor and i hadn't really watched any doctor who so they did like that kind of reboot in like was it 2011 and matt smith came in and so I don't know if it's just because he was my first doctor or whatever. I fell in love with him. I, his character, his acting, I, I, it was so good. And then the writing for that season was amazing. Like, um, I guess I don't want to spoil it, but the finale blew me away in a way that I just don't think I've ever felt like that before. And it was such a cool feeling that I went, okay, I got to go watch the other ones now. You got to go watch the other ones. So yeah. instead of watching like it backwards, I just, well, I kind of watched it backwards in a way. As soon as I was done with the, the live season, I went and looked up the first episode with David Tennant, and then I watched it from there going forward to the most recent. And I'm like, this was pretty good. So I looked up Eccleston or whatever. I liked his like one season he got, but I couldn't get into the stuff before, like the old old timey stuff. Like that was just uh, no, uh, it's, not my flavor. It's, it's very it's very different. Um, by the way, how do I make like? Can you make like plants, like hanging plants and things like that? 
Uh, we would have to go buy some, but yes, we could make some. Cause Car, if you look in her house, I think she has some. You can use that as an example. Oh, we can get. I would, I would like some. Yeah, just anything, any like ferns or anything like that we could get a hold of would be cool. Okay, then I'm gonna have to set sail for Pangrosa, whatever it's called. So, so Matt Smith, in my opinion, like as much as I, I think David Tennant had the best exit on the show. Like I, I cried. Like, oh my god, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I dude. I, oh my um, god, yes. <laughs> I don't want to go. Damn, dude, did Matt Smith have the best opening episode ever? Oh, like, so epic. That, it drew me in immediately. Ab oh. mm -hmm. I mean, if you get goosebumps right now thinking about it. Dude, I, I want to go back and watch it right this second. And, uh, yes. dude, okay. yeah, it was it was always my dream to, like, to work on Doctor Who. Like, that would just be, that would be it. Of all the companions, God, we're mm -hmm. really getting into Doctor Who. Um, who, I think what we should do is on three, no, on go, so one, two, three, go, uh, say who our favorite companion was. Okay. Actually, no, no, wait, we'll do this, we'll do this in two separate ways. I want to say biggest crush of a companion, and then after that, we'll say our favorite companion, because it might not be the okay. same. Mm -hmm. All right. So, All right. biggest crush first? Uh, yeah, let's do biggest crush first. So, one, two, three, Clara. Amy Pond. Not bad, not bad. Ooh. Okay. I think actually, I I can see Clara Clara is like um Clara was more my type, but I, I was I was a bit younger when I was watching the Amy Pond stuff. I was just absolutely obsessed with Karen Gillan. I really like Amy's uh story actually a lot, a lot. Especially with the whole mm -hmm. thing with Rory, but um I don't know, dude. I was sucked in immediately with Clara and the fact that she had the whole backstory that she did, it, it she just carried over to do the other doctor. Do you know so what well. I think they messed up with her is I would have loved you know, there were different iterations of Clara, right? The whole point was she was throughout time. Yeah. I would have loved the like Victorian maid Clara to be the one that was like carried through. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that was the superior Clara. I wasn't as big a fan of teacher Clara. I I, I wanted to have my Victorian maid Clara back. Okay, so then now we got to do, uh, maybe not necessarily companion, but favorite like character from Doctor Who. So like Ooh. anyone, do you need a moment to anyone. think? Because I already know who mine is. Okay, I need I need a moment to think. All right, all right, all right. While you think, uh, I'll just say real quick to everyone who hasn't seen Doctor Who and can't stand that we're talking about this, you got to give it a chance. It it was a show that I think I had heard about so much growing up, I didn't care much for. I'm so glad I did finally get into it, and I enjoyed the ride like the entire way. Okay, I've, I've got it. I think I've got it. Okay, so same thing. I'll do like one, two, <laughs> three, and then we'll say it. So one, two, three, Jack Mickey. Harkness. Oh! Oh, I like it. I like <laughs> it. I'm a big fan of Jack. Yeah, I loved dude when when Torch. I I wasn't such a fan of Torchwood if I'm being honest, but I did mm, love that he nah. was in it. No, he was he was he was brilliant. And then I guess they kind of like they've hinted that he's gonna be back in a big way like the next season. Um very, I, very recently. I'm so torn about the recent season, and not because the doctor is female. I know that that's been like a thing for people. But I feel like and I don't know how you feel about this. I don't wanna like seem complainy too much, but like this whole season or most recent season with with the girl doctor felt like it was more of a diversity higher inclusive situation where they were so focused on i don't feel like it felt like doctor who things but more like weirdly social things like oh true yeah so she's for one i want to like preface that i think that she had with better writing she, she as an actress she has the potential to be such an incredible yeah i think it was the um, writing that let her down it, it, like she was a yeah. great actress for sure. So she's, you know, and she's she's very close with David Tennant, who gave her a lot of like help with with the role because they worked on um Broadchurch together. But yeah, so that they were like social issues are important, but, but and I like I liked some of the historical social issues they tackled. Yeah, but well, then well, they, they, did, they didn't they did like an yeah, but they did a like a they've done like four back in time episodes all focused on social issues and then did um then they did a climate change one where there were like plastic monsters and yeah I was like, the, That's the plastic a bit on the monsters nose. one was where i fought that was actually the exact episode where i rolled my eyes and said come on <laughs> it was the worst it was the, the actual worst like and it just pained me as as a writer and a doctor who fan i was just, no i'm not about it yeah my, my thing is like uh you know the old guy the, the Indian girl, the black guy companions are just like, 
I don't know. They all were good in their own way, but it didn't feel like they meshed well together. No. Um, the old guy ended up being my favorite by far. <laughs> Same name as I have, so I like them. <laughs> <laughs> He was, he was, yeah, he was, he was funny. He added something. The others were just kind of there to ask questions on behalf of like the viewers, you know, so. Yeah. Well, either way, like, I mean, it's not like I hated the season. I just felt like it was weaker than the others personally. Oh yeah, for sure. But if they are going to bring Jack back, then I'm on board, whatever. I saw the episode that they brought him in for and I thought it was pretty good. But if they're going to, I hadn't heard anything else other than that. Cause the problem is over here, Doctor Who's not as big of a deal. So right, you don't hear so right, much about right, right. it. <laughs> It's a yeah. Whereas I don't know. I I I know Jodie Whittaker's after this season they've shot. She's she's done, um, which is a shame. I just you know I don't think they explored her as well as they could have, and it's not her fault. But you know it's not the end of the world. Yo, know, I kind of thought actually uh, quite a bit when I was watching Loki. I had those kind of like same kind of vibes from um, yeah. the actress they had playing Sylvie. Yeah, so, um, funny, yeah, funny story, like, one of the guys I, I work with actually has been on a date with her. Really? This, yeah. That's cool. That is very Did cool. he have any fun stories, or was it just like, uh... She was, um, so she was, she was super lovely, and an apparently an amazing cook, um, is, is the only stories I have, but I, I do know that she was a little old for him, um, because she looks very, she just looked very young, though. Yeah, uh, I guess that's movie makeup magic and stuff, right? Mm, right, right. But okay, okay, okay. We're nerding out a lot, which I'm okay with. But let's get back to you, my man. <laughs> let's talk but, about yeah. Oz again. <laughs> it's not the not the not the Doctor Who cast. So okay, you got your cool manga like en route. That's gonna come out eventually. Um, I actually, to be honest, I would love to see this go in the direction of like Tower of God for you, where you just like, you start this manga. And it just gets picked up later, you know, like not right away, but like right. later and you get this cool show out of it. Is that like an end game goal that's, for you or? That's the dream. My goal as an artist and a writer is always one day to have something either adapted into an animation, um, a film, a TV show, anything uh, along those lines. And and Webtoon is just such a crazy platform right now. You don't, there's no other platform like, like, I'm sorry, I know this is on Twitch and will be posted on YouTube, but partnered, oh, like featured Webtoon creators, dude, like... So to get features on Webtoon, it's a lot more difficult than arguably than than Twitch and YouTube Partner, right? It's like, um, it's it's not it's nothing to do with viewership numbers or anything like that. Like Webtoon editors look at every single thing that every single series that is uploaded to their website is seen by one of their editors, um, which is crazy. Right. And they will they will see a series and they will track it as it like and sort of they're, w they're watching at all times to see like hey what's like our next feature gonna be yeah it, it kind of reminds and... me of like uh people go to like the amateur sports games in college and stuff to scout for right. the next pro yeah and and their support team um because you when you when you are featured and you become a featured creator and you start getting posted on their front page they pay you unlike any other partner thing they pay you a minimum wage right they pay you this is like i can talk about this publicly they, they pay you two thousand dollars minimum a month whoa um, to every single featured creator that's awesome um, they give you one-to-one -one editor support like pretty much 24 7 you have access to your editor as long as they're awake Yo, it's a... and it's they, a will, shame, though. they will get you these opportunities right they will talk to tv studios and 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 hello, hello. Sorry. Oh, I didn't because I don't. Know. You just said TV <laughs> studios and, and I was like, oh, and what? Yeah, I think my I think my internet dropped for a second. Um, yeah, they were they were talk to these these TV studios, and basically just sort of do as much as they can to help um, to help you succeed. And it's really really nice to see. That's amazing because I just feel like nowadays, like I was getting interrupted to make a joke about it, but like. It's a shame they don't pay you an exposure. They just pay you real dollars, right? And it feels like, <laughs> um, for, like I hate watching artists get taken advantage of. I'm not an artist myself, but like I appreciate the work people do, and I know how difficult it is. I actually, um, I did a little bit of animation in high school, back when like I think Flash was the brand new program and people had never heard of before and stuff. I love Flash, dude. Yeah, so like I I realized quickly doing it how 
painful it is to have to pay attention to the same three drawings as you do the onion skin to the next keyframe for like seven hours like i get it artists and like animators have my respect because i've seen how difficult it is firsthand <laughs> oh oh no i found the boat okay we're good uh we we're good. coming we we're coming up on the city uh i <gasps> guess unfortunately this is like spoiler alerts for you who never finished the game oh i mean that's i don't think i'd ever reach this far <laughs> well yeah this is like one of the last things of the current content and inside okay. here is a vending machine that can sell some plants but there's a couple of like robots we might need to kill along the way uh they're not oh, difficult i'm done i think what i'll do is i'll just distract them while you go and buy stuff <laughs> if that's a possibility that sounds good what do we buy stuff with um so that's the thing i don't know if we have tokens left over because Kara spent a few um uh, yeah classic it, Kara. if we can't afford them they are they do respawn so we might just have to actually do a little bit of adventuring and go into some of the houses that sounds fun this whole actually um this whole thing's really cool because the lore of the game as you progress through it like because I, I i don't know where you left off but basically you keep finding these other like abandoned islands or cities or caravan towns and it's like well why are they abandoned and you read these notes and some of them are really sad like the people start killing each other some of them are like this place it's supposed to be the pinnacle of technology and was going to save everybody, but it actually got like destroyed by a roach infestation or something like that. Like they basically ate all the food and people couldn't live here anymore and stuff like that. I mean, I'm, I'm not a very condensed version of the story, but mm -hmm. it's just kind of cool. They, they put a lot of lore behind this. This wasn't just like the next, the next level to go to and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I do. I like, I am aware like dimly of, of the lore. I think I watched like a lore video breakdown um like a little while ago i do i do really i do really really enjoy this game but it's i feel like it's it's it was such a, like a big commitment as a group of people to get to the end oh yeah um, it was we did it was me kara crumb and captain sparkles and finding a day free to play this each week was pain yeah um so that's that's why i've never got so far is i've had you know two rafts like just sort of you know people can't commit to to playing super frequently oh the engines are dead captain we gotta float in um there's something you can do here i'm gonna tell you about this funny so you can build like a ramp up infinitely right mm -hmm. and apparently if you you like you can't build through an existing structure but you see this little hole here on the side yep so i built a, i was curious like i did this with kara uh on our very first playthrough i was like i wonder if you could build through that hole off the ship like theoretically build a ramp and then like horizontal platforms and it turns out you can and I accidentally, we didn't do this because we want the content of the game, but you right, could yeah. actually skip the whole city process by just essentially building up to the top of a building here. And so oh, that's amazing. prior to the episode with Zine, I had this huge dumbass ramp coming off my raft that went all the way to heaven and it was causing a lot of issues. So we decided to break it like and it mm. came apart like Domino. <laughs> oh that would have been so satisfying to watch oh it felt amazing i was gonna be sad about doing it at first but it felt so amazing anyways let okay, me uh, so do, we, do we have to like jump to jump off and fight robots then it, you know what it sounds more epic than it's gonna be but effectively yeah okay um just come to this little ramp thingy here but yeah anyway back to um back to webtoons so they they, they treat their partners really well and yeah there's there's been two webtoons adapted as far as i'm aware now um god of high school and tower of god have both been turned into anime and then true beauty has been developed into a k-drama which is also pretty sweet um and lore olympus has been bought by netflix so they're adapting some kind of show from that all right i think the vending machine's on the other side of this okay basically just buy stuff uh, until it tells you you can't one of these machines it's a shame we can't steal these little cards <laughs> uh one of these has I think this is the one. Oh, this one here. sells plants. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, I don't even know what. Okay. Oh, they changed this. Nice. You used to just bring up a menu. Now I guess it shows the buttons to press. That's cool. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna keep buying stuff. I want I want a fair few plants. I don't know what they will look like either, right? Oh, my inventory is full. Could you carry some stuff back for me? Yeah, sure. Drop whatever you don't need. I can grab it. Are these just food and? Most of it's cosmetics. Like I, I can make a backpack and a machete, and but I can't make like a boombox or a piano. So I got that. 
Oh, does this stuff respawn? Hold up. No way. Uh, I gotta check upstairs real quick. Okay. Oh, isn't there like a secret button on this one? Oh, maybe it's somewhere else. Mm. Oh yeah, Ashley Marie was also part of our raft crew. I forgot about that. Oh, she's part of my uh, Phasma crew. We actually, she's um one of my first, because obviously we've been in a lockdown, right? And I've made so many friends through Twitch. So she's the first Twitch friend that I met with IRL, which was super fun. Yeah, Ashley's uh, an interesting person. When I when I, uh, she first started playing with us, I didn't realize she used to be such like a like a big deal in the Minecraft community. Minecraft community, right? Yeah. Actually, since you're on my side of like kind of newer to some of these mm -hmm. people, I, I I don't know what your first impression was, but like, there's so many people who I'm I'm just so impressed don't have like a massive ego. Like I just assume right. like for example Jordan, he's got millions of subscribers yeah. on YouTube. I thought he'd like be some guy with a massive ego, but instead he's just like, was... another gamer, you know. Yeah, it's I'm not not to say that like lots of people don't have a massive ego, but I want to say the majority of people that I've met that have been significantly larger than than I am viewership and viewership and everything wise have just they've they've just been so chill and nice. Um, I guess because they're used to it, right? It's just not it doesn't define them like who they are because they're also I think at a point viewership wise where they don't really have to care who they play with and network in the same way that a lot of people do whereas i find that sometimes it's the more the more people in the middle not the huge streamers and the youtubers but more kind of the people that are like trying to climb this ladder that are a bit more dismissive of, of smaller creators yeah and that's what's interesting i was talking to uh our mutual friend joey graceffa uh joey. a bit of a more private convo so i'm not gonna like start doing too many details but he talked about how basically yeah He's been around long enough that he can kind of tell who like the real ones are and you can tell when the people are kind of clout chasey or just in it for the money or whatever and i was like you know what that's the vibe i get though because like i feel people some people you just I vibe with enough enough. like you mm -hmm. you're like this is a good person i'd stake my reputation on this person being a good person um, yeah i, I found I have, um, definitely like, on, i have one of your plants who, by the way oh uh i don't think i can carry it okay i'll carry it it's fine. Thanks. Just want to make sure we didn't forget it. Yeah, it's it's um it's a strange one. Twitch Twitch friendships are like I've had so many uh, so many, I've had the same conversation so many times like offline with people about like like yeah, Twitch friendships are, are so strange because ultimately like you know like already in a few months there have been situations where like people have had opportunities and they've outgrown you know quote unquote outgrown me or or. You know, like anything like that. Like I, I joined Twitch to play with. Um, I had my, I had my friends. The first people that got me into streaming and in these Among Us servers was um Elam and, and Milk. And very, very quickly, almost as soon as like I started playing Among Us with Elam, he was in the Happy lobbies, and like I was like playing in lobbies without him. And you know that immediately, he's playing Among Us with these different people every day, and I'm playing Among Us with different people every day. And I'm kind of like, well, you know, we're still friends, but but I just don't see you anymore. <laughs> Dude, Elam is funny. Uh, we, I was on his stream one day, and we got into this whole thing about how he doesn't know how to tie shoes. And he thought, like, wait, chat's trolling me. And then he, he tried to show off tying shoes on stream. I'm like, oh, that was a mistake, man. Like, <laughs> rookie move right there. <laughs> um, <he's, laughs> he has some interesting ideas about, <laughs> about a few things. I loved the meme though for a while where uh, Five Up couldn't tell Elam and Koji apart. Um, Elam and Koji. Yeah, that's, British that's people. Me, but then I, I find that with American accents, like male male American voices are almost indistinguishable to me. Really? I expected everyone I was speaking to to sound like past. <laughs> hey y'all. <laughs> hey y'all. Well, actually, and the fact that I'm yeah. curious. So I don't have an American accent per se, but like a lot of people mm -hmm. who are American end up thinking I'm American. And I'm just wondering, does my speech or dialect come off that way too, or is it just like? I think it. I think it does. I. You sound. You definitely sound different. But you. To me. To me. I. I would have said like. You know. You sound American. Interesting. Um, yeah. Um. How do I green paint? Is this a thing we can do? Uh. Yeah. Would you? There's like a color wheel on the, 
on the paintbrush oh. and you'll see like you have a spectrum. Oh. Okay, I need yellow and blue. Here, I have your motivational quote thing to hang wherever you'd like. Um, Perfect. Also, hey, can you just check something? Because I don't know if you get my patterns I unlock or not. If you hit tab, mm -hmm. right, you go to the bottom option for the chair. Can you see like yes. the ability to make lights and a flag and rugs and stuff? I have put, I have made lights, so yes. Oh, I'd already made you lights, but that works. <laughs> yeah, I get access to everything in this world, I think. Here, in the, uh, on the top right chest inside the mm -hmm. room, I put your motivational poster. <gasps> Thank you. Yeah, if you have access it, to mine, that's great. Then I don't have to worry about it because I didn't know if it would share the plans or not. I don't really know how raft works that way. Also, here's your uh, two plants. Mm. They're, on the, they're on the ground there. Do you see them? Oh, thank you. I'm trying not to like look at your building too much because I want to just take its glory in when it's finished. But I like the color scheme I've, already. Thanks. Yeah, I've um, I've got an idea. I want an idea of something I want to try. It's going to involve cutting a few walls. <laughs> yeah. Which is always scary because I'm worried like the whole thing is just going to collapse. Yeah, that's what effectively happened with the <laughs> Um, Okay, I got some basic questions for you now. Like some super right, basic right. baby questions. All right. It's it's your last day on Earth. Maybe you're ascending to go to space or you're on death row, whatever it is. You get a last meal. What is your ideal meal? What's the thing you love so much that that's what you would take as your oh, last meal? I just think it sounds so vanilla, but I love pizza to me is the perfect meal. Okay. Any like, um, type of pizza? Like topping wise? Yeah. Or? So, so, uh, like, like ramen, I would say was my favorite food, but pizza, um, I always have, cause I'm a vegetarian. So, um, I get my protein, I have mushrooms on my pizza and then I have, um, I like, I like a crunch. So I also have green, green peppers and just green peppers. Um, so green peppers and mushrooms and also, right. I'm assuming in heaven, I won't need the, I won't need to, you know, use the bathroom. So <laughs> this will be the, the, I could eat sweet corn and no longer have like sweet corn poo. I, um, uh, I appreciate that you assume you're going to heaven, man. You've lived a good Whoa, life, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been a, a little, a little vain. Maybe, maybe not. But you know, um... <laughs> I like to think that, like, because, like, I'm not particularly a believer in anything. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm not atheist. I'm more like agnostic, I guess. Like, I believe yeah. there could be something out there, maybe. But until I see otherwise, it's like, I'm how like, would whatever. we know? There is no evidence either way. So why not? You know, why deny it? Why, why put effort into dismissing it? Well, whatever, whatever awaits. Um, I hope you get your sweet corn, fr no boom last meal. Sweet corn, no poo. Dude, do you think like only, only in hell do you get buttholes, right? Oh and, my god! And heaven, it's just, yeah. Well, actually, if you think it'd be the other way around, because in hell, if you didn't have a butthole, you couldn't follow through, and you'd just be oh, constipated true. forever. That would be the, that would be the torture. That would be, that would be the torture. Uh, well, actually, honestly, my personal punishment in hell, like if you wanted to torture me, would be like forever needing the bathroom on like a road trip. That would be my hell. Hell for with me would be um, that feeling where you need to sneeze but can't. <gasps> oh, that's a good one too. Yeah, it's like that tickle in your nose. You're so like you're so close to sneezing, but it just never follows through. Oh, yikes! Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Why? Sorry, one sec. Okay. It's... Oh, okay. That was a scam call. <laughs> no big deal. Oh. Yo, I tried to take one of these on stream. Um, I put it on speakerphone and everything, and it, it was like text to speech, like, this is the government auditing you. You have not paid taxes and are under arrest unless you call this number and pay for things or something, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, great. This is the perfect opportunity. And like, I pick up and it's like the typical Indian scammer is like, hello. And uh, I said, yeah, hi. I just got this message that I'm like under arrest or something. I'm really afraid. How can I um, you <laughs> handle this? And they just immediately hung up on me. Oh no, I think they're just so, I think everyone has the same idea, right? They've just been burned one too many times now. Yeah, they've heard too many excited people pick up. It shouldn't, you shouldn't feel excited when you pick up a scam call, I guess. 
Yeah, I did it. I remember I only had I remember one as a kid. It was my very first time and I'd lit I'd been told about them, right? My parents had warned me about them. And <laughs> And I picked up the phone and it was my moment to shine, right? I, I get this. I <laughs> I've been this waiting for this caller. moment my whole life. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. And I froze and my brain went blank. Aww. And he was like, he was like, hello, hello. And I, and I just I just went, I'm a robber. And he, he went, oh. And I was like, yeah, you this is my robber? house. What? <laughs> yeah. I broke it into this house and answered the phone. What and, did these people and, do? And at that point, um, he... he he kind of, I could hear him trying to decide whether it was worth him trying to like still do his pitch to this person that had broken into this house. And, and, he, and he went, he went, so it's, he went, so this isn't your house? And I went, no. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, before I ADD and forget, by the way, on the topic of vegetarian, uh, I'm right. not a vegetarian, just FYI okay. for anyone listening. Um, but man, one of my favorite pizzas is actually vegetarian. It's this potato gorgonzola pizza at this like yeah. local spot. And oh my God, it's like they put fried potatoes on top instead of like pepperoni. And they use like a white sauce instead of a tomato sauce, like a, like a zesty garlic sauce or something. It's so good. It's one of my favorite pizzas. Ooh, that does sound good. And it's uh, they cook it in this like authentic Italian stone oven type deal too. So like you can kind of taste it in the crust really. Anyways, I just I've never been excited to talk about vegetarian pizza with some until just oh, now. No, no. Veg <laughs> vegetarian vegetarian pizza. I find that with a lot of vegetarian stuff, it's like so the most popular bakery chain in the UK, right? Like if you go to a, a high street, you'll find something called a Greg's, and their vegan sausage rolls are more popular than their meat ones because like people just put more effort into it, right? You're you're lacking a lot of natural flavors, so they will they will engineer this stuff. They will be really creative and inventive, and you know, it's sometimes it just it's true though. Nice. Like I've thought about this a lot with especially I'm trying to make like the next new Beyond Meat version of whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where by default it doesn't taste as good as say the real version so you put all this extra effort in to try and convince everybody that it tastes better and that makes it taste better whereas the meat industry doesn't need to improve anything because it just already tastes good right? <laughs> like it's just it's good to go yeah it's like so the um so for example the the vegetarian sausage roll i was just talking about like they the vegetarian one is just well the vegan one sorry is just filled with spices like they've they've you know they've not just taken the leftover cheap bits of of animal and mush them together they've they've like engineered something engineering i like that actually way to describe it it's a marvel of human engineering this delicious plant-based product yeah well it's like you know invite talking just not from like a moral standpoint which is the reason i'm vegetarian but from like an environmental standpoint there will be a point in at some point right where it's like you know we can't eat meat forever we don't want our, our planet to to die and so like we will be either having meat grown in a in a lab and scientifically engineered to be incredibly tasty or we'll be in mushed up insects and you're gonna have to do everything in your power to make them not look not or taste, taste like mushed yeah. up insects and the funny thing is is the people who have been practicing with like these meat alternatives they're gonna have the leading industry there because they'll have the advantage mm. of like oh yeah well we've been trying to make bad stuff taste good for years <laughs> dude there's yeah there's there's some stuff you just you just can't can't nail but i i the one thing i'm sick of as a vegetarian talking to people is like people f immediately feel defensive and it's why it's something i don't bring up that often like i'm like i'm not i'm not judging you i'm not in a constant state of judging you please please chill like i've you know I, I've you had know to I, me i i no, yeah. You know why it's like that for you, though? Why? Because you're vegetarian, not vegan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like that old joke, right? Uh, How do you know someone's vegan? They'll tell you. <laughs> they'll tell you, right? <laughs> but, you know, I have to, like, I worked, at, um, you know, I worked with dogs for and, and wolves for, um, like, three years. Like, I've, you know, I've had to cut up meat. I've had to, you know, cook chicken and stuff. I'm See, okay with it. I wish I actually, you know, to be honest, I wish I could go vegetarian. I think I'm just, I'm too conditioned to eat meat. And like, there's some weeks where I'll just accidentally eat vegetarian all week. And it's not a problem health wise at all, but it's like, man, end of the day, like I love me a bologna sandwich, you know, <laughs> but if, right, they, yeah. if they come up with like the alternatives that do work and it's like plant-based, 
I am so on board with paying extra for that because mm -hmm. I think well I, I might not be as morally objective to it as you are I definitely do have that degree of like no fucking cows are smart and cool and cute and I'd probably not eat them if I could afford to you know right and that's that's why I'm vegetarian is is vegans that little bit too difficult for me so um I find it's like a, you know it's <laughs> It's it's a, it, I don't find it too difficult. I'm I'm um in Japan it was very very rough and I did have to be a pescatarian. I had to eat, you know I had to eat fish and, and everything like that. I ended up um there's a word for vegetarian but nobody knows it. So I ended up kind of like um getting all these weird looks and like I would say like I, you know I can't eat I, like the chef would come out and like looking confused after the waitress went into the kitchen and I was like I was like oh I can't eat like pork and he's like oh so you can eat chicken and I'm like like no I can't eat I can't eat chicken or cow or pork and he's he's like oh so you, um so you can eat lamb and I'm like no and eventually I just settled for telling everyone that I was Buddhist <laughs> <laughs> and then they just go oh and it's not oh. a problem <laughs> I mean if it works right if it works it works yeah actually that's it so I didn't even bother thinking to ask this earlier but with uh, all the time you spent mm -hmm. in Japan do you speak Japanese yeah yeah very i'm very very rusty but um something again but it's going back to the comic like uh something i'm really excited to do is i i started youtube um doing uh doing music stuff like lots of lots of video game music um songs and parodies and i don't really want to go back to that but i don't want to lose kind of like like music and art have always been my two favorite things and i've never really found a way to kind of have time for the two um it's always been one or the other so i'm going to be writing a lot of uh rock songs like well j-pop -J songs to go along with with the uh the comic because oh, music yeah. plays a big part in it and i'm i'm excited to kind of like you know pick up some japanese again and and do some translation stuff i uh i've watched so much anime over my life i'm half mm -hmm. japanese i had grandparents who spoke japanese i have never picked up any japanese despite trying like my whole <laughs> it's it's um it's tough so like like being in europe obviously we're taught european languages and they all have these these similar characteristics and traits like i feel like when you've learned one asian language you know you, you can pick up the rest a lot more quickly but they're just so different the way that they're, they're formed um is is crazy and i know a lot of people that can speak it quite well and just not read it because that's the characters are so out there and wild well, I feel confident at least I can usually tell what someone's speaking in terms of like, oh, that sounds Chinese. That doesn't sound Japanese and stuff like that. And actually on that note, it's kind of interesting. There's been this kind of like, um, I don't know, like upsurge of, of Chinese related anime coming out. That yeah, I've actually been so enjoying a bit. China's like my first K-drama um which i would i really really loved i can't remember the name of it exactly it was like it was king's something and i was all ready to to try my first k-drama and it turned out it was chinese the whole time <laughs> um like I, I i heard i heard them talking like i was i was a bit into it and i was listening to them talk and i was like that doesn't sound korean and it's it's china have just made these incredible k-dramas these incredible anime and now they're really into they're coming into web comics as well um kind of like one of those things where it's like hey anything you can do we can do <laughs> yeah wait have you heard of um a show it, it, it's on netflix now too called scissor seven <gasps> that is in my opinion like the f like the funniest oh my um, god animated show in the last like year <laughs> you're like the first person i've talked to who's seen this i'm so happy right now I, I had it was it was one of my friends it was one of my friends was like you have to watch this show and I was like it looks so weird like is he fighting with scissors and he was just just watch it dude dude Xiao Fei is like my favorite part of that show when he like gets all muscular and stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I would I, love dude if that if that show blew up and someone made like crumb fan art <laughs> yeah I'm sad that it has such a small following but uh, one thing I thought was really cool is I watch if if I really am into a show like I like it a lot I'll watch both the English and the original versions yes and um i gotta see the english but they did something i didn't expect and i don't know why i didn't expect it but i think it's just because mm -hmm. how i've been cultured with anime they gave him such a thick asian accent not thick but i yeah. guess like noticeable and asian accent it sounds good yeah and it works especially because like you know he's chinese and like there's like the 
The um, so the intro, the, the thing that pe people common, the common complaint, right? Why reason people don't watch um dubs? Obviously, like speaking Japanese, I I don't necessarily. The only people that watch, I know, watch dubs, like they're watching them because they're working and they can't read subtitles and they want it on in the background, right? But um, in Japan, they treat their voice actors like like actual celebrities. Um, they're paid a lot more and they're kind of, um, you know, they they actors you get a lot more actors voice acting in in anime whereas i find that there's there's a much smaller talent pool oh in, yeah in, in america US. dude it's always like the same yeah. five voice actors and it's not always a problem unless you're watching shows back to back and you're like oh wait that's the same guy who was in fate and that's the same guy who was in this and he was it's, in this it's and... basically the cast of critical role <laughs> just <laughs> yeah you know, effectively yeah from that mercer yeah mm -hmm. It's like Matt Mercer is every character, and then occasionally you'll get like Laura Bailey for all the female ones. Yo, uh, what uh, Jennifer Hale has that a bit too. She's a, I think, oh, very brilliant. commonly used. Yeah. I love her voice too, so there's no complaints. But I, uh, I fell in love with her in Mass Effect, and then I just started hearing Fem Shep's voice everywhere, and I was so on board with that because I was so in love with her as a character. But yeah, I definitely, uh, I wish there was more. Not diversity per se, but like a reason for there to be diversity. Like if, if we did treat the voice actors better and I feel like it, it's getting better. You're seeing them in credits now and stuff where they didn't it's, use to. Um, it's as animated, like as an animated, like, you know, as a medium, as an art form becomes more popular, there's going to be more demand for voice actors. And I think that will bring like the, the respect along with it, like um, into the Spider-Verse um, has showed like, like, hey, guys, you know, we can make a really artsy amazing film and everyone will still go watch it either you know like um but yeah i i dude, i could i could just sing scissor seven phrases all day and that's kind of like um i'm making a manga for for a western audience and i feel like scissor seven kind of kind of has that where it's very self-aware um in the jokes yeah oh for and, sure absolutely <laughs> And that's what that's what I want. Like it's this isn't made to be released in Japan, you know. This is meant to this is made to look like and look like a manga, talk like a manga, but like have Western Western jokes in it. And that's that's kind of the goal with, with mine. Mm, it's just missing a finishing touch. I'm actually really Oh you close? This is turning out. I'm, yeah, I'm getting close. Nice. I keep forgetting to eat and drink, which is a is a problem. But I know also this like game, a, a this real game is, struggle. It's so annoying too because it's it's like oh it, you just suddenly flatline. You know you're just like oh my god I can't move. This is so annoying. Yeah, yeah, they're so subtle. I don't know. I mean Minecraft I never forget, but but Raft I'm just like all of a sudden I'm my my screen is blurring. Okay, I've thought about that actually because I'm not someone who's a big fan of Minecraft in terms of playing it. Mm -hmm. Like I love I love watching people make cool buildings, but I I don't want to be the one to make the cool buildings, right? Anyways, yeah. I think for me, I get so much more easily carried away in Raft, so I don't pay attention to the other stuff as much. That's, also, that's probably it. Yeah. Like Minecraft, I'm just kind of like, I don't know what to do. I guess I'll watch my hunger bar. <laughs> <laughs> I feel badly. Too, I'm, uh, I, I think there's I'm so a much. Builder. Oh, yeah, me too. 100%. I, I don't get the fighting stuff, although did win twitch rivals with kara uh fighting and that was pretty cool oh did you do i i've um i've spoken to pika about maybe maybe doing the next one but it is all fighting and i'm like i would have to practice no no so that that was what was so fun for me i didn't and don't really have minecraft experience fighting at all like mm -hmm. i i've strictly only ever built things so i was really worried i was just gonna be a filler spot and i kind of pre-apologized to my team about being a filler spot and uh it was actually pretty easy. I think just like the way that Pika runs things, at least, makes it nice that you don't need to be a super crazy expert at Minecraft to be able to at least hold your own. Like hundred percent. Like I think our team we needed we needed puns. Without puns, I don't think we would have won, won the fighting as much. Yeah. But I also didn't feel like dead weight because I was contributing enough that like it felt good. It was fun, and Pika runs things really well. In all honesty. the motivational quote oh i gotta come see this I've, I've i've never seen this item before it's brand new to me too it is so good it is like Actually, um, wait, are you ready for the big reveal yet or no um oh i just i feel like i need a seating area on the inside just to kind of to, right. to vibe in i might i might i'm gonna put a rug down 
Um, There's different shapes of rugs too. Circular. We'll go for a circular, a nice circular rug. Okay. Put that down. Oh, oh. Okay, I like that. And then we'll get some seating. Aza, why is there a table in the rope chest? Um, I took some rope and my inventory was full. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> rope table in the rope have, chest what is wrong with you are you a monster i've got i've got like eyes like bigger than my inventory when it comes to just just building stuff that's how you know um, you're a builder though because you're so excited to get the next thing right right like, so i've i i build what i've since been told is called a chest monster in minecraft which is where you just you're when you're building you're just you have so many ideas and need so many resources that it just spills out into like 20 chests so you build this beautiful monument and then around it there's just all these ugly wooden chests just filled with crap that you've like needed while you were building it i've got uh i'm like i'm like in real life i'm like this too where i'm i appear messy but i'm very organized with my mess like Okay, it looks like there's a bunch of shirts on the floor, but it's like, I know exactly which shirt is on the floor. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And with games, I just stash stuff really quickly. So for me, it's fine. But when I play with others, like my friend Artemis, oh man, he hates, he hates, like he just wants to organize when I play with him because he knows how much of a mess I make. And I feel so bad every time. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, how many plants? All right, let's hang up a few more. A few last plants. And then I think I'll be, I'll be happy. Nice. Just, um, I mean, you know, you know, Elena, we know Elena. I am, I am very, very jealous because I'm waiting to move out to like fill my streamer kind of room with, with as many plants. I want a new office. So I'm kind of, I'm resisting the urge to buy so many plants, but, but they just make everything look so nice. Yeah, I think Kara's another big plant person too. I don't know. Plants in general are like I want if like I haven't looked much into it, but I think mm -hmm. I want a snake plant if I'm gonna get a plant. Ooh, yeah. I feel like those just Ooh. they look nice and they don't need to look fabulous to look nice. <laughs> as a as a big karate kid fan, I am ready when I move out to have like my big dream is to have like to have like a Mr. Miyagi like bonsai tree room where oh like i've never i've never looked into that but like i really want to start to finish have like a whole like nursery of bonsai trees and like trim them and just you know see what it's like okay on that topic gotta ask did you watch mm -hmm. cobra kai oh <gasps> yes okay and i won't hear anything bad about it because i freaking <laughs> loved it so i have not seen the full third season yet but okay. I saw the first two and I liked it quite a bit, actually. So you, mm -hmm. you won't hear me start to badmouth it or anything. But I will say I was very apprehensive about it at first because it felt like they were leaning really hard on using Mr. Miyagi for like everything. Right. And I'm like, how many times can this guy have a revelation about his past that he hasn't already had? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I liked I was surprised because um, it gave me that that was it Barney Stinson and they would always talk about like those memes about how oh he was actually the bad yeah, guy and then they actually kind of yeah. make him out to be the bad they, guy they, in this as adults they made that a joke that was that was what got me hooked and that was how I got like my dad wouldn't watch it because he's the biggest cry kid fan I know like to the point where like you know he because of the cry kid as a kid he became like a, a full like third damn black belt in Kyokushin oh but, geez um <laughs> like I was like the way that like there's literally just one episode where he sits down and tells the karate kid but from his perspective like where yeah. he's the good guy and yeah, i yeah. was just like oh that is amazing like that just that is amazing writing i love actually um, i love re-envisioning of things when it's done well like um i don't know if yeah. you watched it or not but the new ducktales that came out it was yeah. i'm so sad i got cancelled they did such an amazing job of not only incorporating all of the stuff from the past and the previous like versions of ducktales universe but they did it so well and made it refreshing and new that I, I just I loved it. Okay, I want some more lights actually. I'm trying to think what Sorry. else what else uh, is like a good re envisioning of things? Like Karate Kid was good with um, Cobra Kai. I try to think of like of actually like, yeah, like good reboots. Um because that's the one that I've like immediately comes oh, it's, to mind. Um it's Dark Crystal. Did you did you do the Dark Crystal remake? 
I haven't seen it yet, but it's on my list of to see things. Okay, so that was the weird thing about that, and this isn't a spoiler. Um, the weird thing about that one was it's like I because it's a prequel, it's like I already know what happens. I already know that you know like all these go. happy, lovely girlflings are all gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> like everything's gonna go wrong, well, and it 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 was really it. It was already quite a dark show, and I'm watching it. I'm just like, oh god. Well, you know, it was interesting. That was kind of like my take on Rogue One with Star Wars. Like, mm -hmm. you knew that none of these characters were gonna make it because they didn't appear in like you know the original Star Wars trilogy. Right. Yeah. But man, did I fall in love with all the characters, and I love. I thought, to be honest, and I'm sure I'll get hate for this somewhere. I thought Rogue One was better than all of the most recent three uh, the, oh, the sequels. Oh no, 100. percent Rogue One is is one of the best Star Wars movies ever made. It is. It is just incredible, and I love the fact that even though it's Disney, they were like, "Hey, no, you can you can kill off these characters if you want to. Like, you don't have to drag this out into like uh, a whole series." Which which Halo game was it that did that too? Was that um, um, Reach? Halo Reach. Reach. That was, Where a, that was Reach, another great you one. You start with the helmet on a planet. You start knowing you're, you're gonna die at the end. Yeah, right? yeah. And like as it goes on, you're kind of like, "Oh, okay, you know these characters are gonna start falling off," but like. You're kind of hoping that it won't be till way later. <laughs> you know? like, okay, I, I need food. I need food and then I'm ready for the big reveal. Okay, I'll bring you 20 bananas, my friend. <gasps> Thank you. Stick them up. This I... is a stick up. <laughs> Actually, I don't even have to put my hands up. Ah. Oh, uh, oh, oh, God, oh. it's running away. <laughs> I should have thrown it on the ramp. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll get some water tea. All right, I am so excited to see your project, oh, Dawson. Man. We need we need to talk off stream about like anime and and shows sometime because it, it sounds like we've listened to a lot of this, like watched a lot of the same yeah. ones, especially the court ones. I think we're getting this. I've get the same vibes. Yeah, we can nerd out sometime for sure. <laughs> the thing I love about anime too is uh, like I, I, okay, this is the last question I'm gonna ask because we're gonna conclude it with a reveal. But if an intro is good. Like we're talking like it's right. got a banger soundtrack or maybe it's animated really well, whatever your definition of good is. Do you skip it or do you watch it every time? I watch it every time. Okay, because I feel like I'm very much on that same camp. I know a lot of people will skip it even if they like it. But I'm just no, like I yeah. Um the the one th so I was I've been rewatching um it's uh it's not an anime, but Steven Universe is one of my favorite intro songs of like any animated show. And I've been rewatching it and Netflix um automatically skips the intro yes. and it's really upset me I, there's so many times where i'll have to rewind on netflix to go back to like the intro mm -hmm. like uh was it bna uh i don't know do you watch bna yeah 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 at first i love the song that song is such a banger i get like i play that in the shower and i just start dancing to it like and so i want to watch it every same. time but when i'm binging it it auto skips it to the next episode and mm -hmm. i'm like ah um some shows also do it where they like they edit it themselves to be like that so supernatural has carry on my wayward son is like the <laughs> intro song and i want to listen to that every single episode dude and they just in the later seasons they just cut it so it's like just oh, the logo and like a, like a Sorry, loud sound call. what is going on with my phone today Sorry, one sec. Okay, uh, I actually have to go to the front door, so let's speed this up. <laughs> I, I told okay. them five minutes. Okay. Sorry, uh, apparently my groceries are... I ordered them for six, but it's 4.47. Um, 4.47. Well, you know what? At least you get your groceries <laughs> earlier. All right, but yeah, on the topic the of Supernatural, reveal? before we get out of that mm -hmm. one, loved the show, hated where it went, but it was still a good ride the whole way through, I think. It was a great ride the whole way through. All right, Oz. Uh, since, yeah, this is the big reveal. Dun, 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 dun. Oh my god, I'm glad we do this at night. The lights look so good. It's so cute, right? I love these lights. So I had to just put them on the top to kind of balance it out a bit. Because like, yeah. But... I love it. I love this look, dude. You're right. You did. Oops. You went for a very zen thing and I fell off. <laughs> I um, I didn't really know how to do grass. So I was like, I'll paint the floor green. Then it kind of worked. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you did. Because for whatever reason in Raft, grass is like an end game item with resources that are really rare to get. <laughs> Okay, good. There's no yeah, reason so for it either. Green. I I mean, hey, in a flooded world, right? Although there are islands. There are literally islands with grass. So yeah, it is a bit dumb. Oh, the plants do look really good, though, to be honest. Like, uh, you, the symmetry and stuff. Oh, I love it. Ah, oh, dude, I just, uh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy with the plants that we have as well. And then we, 
Good things come to those who float. I built, I knew, knowing we were going to get this item, dude, I built the entire base as a shrine to this. I love it. I love it and hate it. I hate it here, but it's I love so, it. It's so like Facebook mum. Like, like all my ex-girlfriend's mums had those oh, yeah. signs they would, on they their would walls walking their houses. And post it yeah. on their wall or whatever Facebook is, yeah. <laughs> The lights look really like, good though. I I love these lights so much, man. I I, I had to I had to get the lights in and I had to get the motivational sign in and, and this is what kind of happened. Well, this looks fantastic, Azza. Thanks for coming Thank on you. and building on my raft, leaving a marker, reminding everyone and Aww. me that we were friends at some point. <laughs> we were friends at some point. Well, I don't know how how long. I don't know whether whether you we'll know, fall out in Among Us one day, but not to be morbid about it, but there's some friendships who just like. You're so best friends one day, but you will eventually just like maybe grow apart or whatever. And I hate that I've had to come to terms with that because I just want to be friends with everybody forever. I, forever, right? But uh, yeah, and and Twitch, it's a weird one because you, you're, it's essentially your careers drive you apart like more than anything else. It's yeah, like, oh, I'm over here busy games. doing yeah. this stuff. Yeah, direction of games is is the big one. Well, that's I think a big um, part of why I started this project. It's a nice marker. It's like it's a game that I think I will probably never not love, and. I, I I just look forward to like going back in this one day and be like, oh yeah, I I know when I used to hang out with Ozzy or Car or Zine or who or Mew or whatever. Uh, it's a, so thank it's you. a museum of friendship. True, actually, true, yeah. Um, but let's oh, do Ozzy. Let's get your social shout out because I got to run, right? So where can oh, okay. people find you? And more importantly, we're gonna follow um, you for updates about this upcoming manga, dude. Okay, okay. So um, I'm Ozzy World on like all socials apart from Facebook. So Instagram um twitter twitch uh and youtube and i would say if you want to learn more about the webtoon and everything right like from from this week forward so this is the perfect time i'll be posting a lot of previews and artwork and panels and all of that good stuff about the the webtoon i'm so excited to read that though genuinely like it's i will i will send like you topic. i will send you a load of the artwork now that i'll be kind of posting over the next sort of week or so just so you can check it out nice well Aza, I hope you have. A, I'm gonna save the world before I forget. <laughs> I hope Thank you, you have so a great. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Yeah, and, and I love that this was actually um funny enough a bit of a shorter episode. Some of the other ones are building really long, but this was dope. Uh, so have a great rest of your night, Aza, and I'll see you. I'll see you later, man. You too. I'll see you soon. Hopefully. All right. Bye. bye. Dude. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Raftcast. Uh. I'm probably not going to stream much more today. <laughs> There's just uh, been a lot going on. So if you like the video, I hope you look forward to more of them, I guess. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Check out all of Oz's stuff. And I'm excited to show you the next episode whenever we get to it. Ta-ta for now, everybody. And okay, stop recording. Stream, I, I'm going to run and get my groceries. We'll do shout outs when I get back. So beer beat.
Okay. Oh, carried everything with both hands and sprinted. Kind of a little out of breath from doing it, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> All right. So, uh, like I said, I'm probably not going to stream too much more today. I'm going to go play some Rust off stream with Artemis and Shy. And if anything really Omega cool happens, I'll definitely record it. But, um, oh, I'm way more out of breath than I thought I would be from that. Uh, Chappy, no, thank you for the sub. Gravity, thank you for the five months. And Healthy uh, Twig, thank you for the sub and support as well. Uh, it's been a really rough week, but I'm glad that we were able to do sub only mode and not streamer sub only mode today. So that kind of worked out. Um, if you guys haven't seen what's going on, don't worry about it. I wouldn't say look into it. We're just kind of waiting on some toxicity to pass. Um, and I don't know when, but eventually we'll get back to normal. Discord's currently on private. YouTube comments are disabled. It's not fun, but uh, I really cannot express so much. I appreciate you guys who've been super supportive through this. Like a lot of very nice messages, a lot of really kind supportive messages. Uh, that frankly I've needed and uh, like I said we'll, we're gonna be we'll get through this eventually but uh, I will say if any of you guys are receiving any kind of backlash from what's happening um, whether it's you know my poor mods who are getting death threats from these stupid kids or whether it's you guys who are just subbing and getting messages about it you have my sincerest apologies I wish you guys weren't getting caught in the flack from this bullshit but I mean I have no control over the situation the only person who does doesn't seem to be taking any accountability for it whatsoever so like i said all we can do is just wait for time to pass and things will get back to normal i've been doing this for like long enough that i've seen about a dozen of these events happen to me and even more to others and the key thing is everybody just eventually gets bored and moves on so with that being said um i should be streaming tomorrow unfortunately i don't know when uh so i will tweet when i know what's going on or at least i'll post it in discord but thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for watching and have yourselves a great rest of your day. Let me quickly go see who we can send a small host to. Oh, Mew. Mew's live. Mew was uh, one of our first guests on Raftcast. So there you go. Easy peasy. Go say hi to Mew, guys. Have a good one. Thanks again. I keep saying thanks again like I haven't... Whatever. You know what? Shut up. Get out of here, losers. Nobody... Nobody wants to see your your faces anyways. Go go on, get. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs>